Thanks for tuning in. This next video is of GSD Kane working urban trails for the very first time with a harness and a long lead. This is the time for patience when we get into this urban environment. We're transitioning from the woods and soft surface where everything is easy and now we're going into distractions and everything is hard. We have to take our time, we have to be careful, and we have to make sure that we keep productive sources in mind at all times. Urban work is really the pinnacle of trailing, and to get there you have to have a solid foundation in the soft surface first. This is just the beginning stages, what you see here, and I cover off on a lot of this in my new book, The Tower of Trailing, which will be published by Grey Wolf Publications January 15th of 2015. You can also check out our website at gak9.com or perhaps order any of our other books. Hope to see you guys out trailing someday soon. Okay, I've just started Young Kane on a bottle scent article, and uh, even though he has good scent, and there's probably only really one good trail here, uh, he just goes right off to the races. He's showing absolutely no trailing behavior. He's just running, hoping he can get something. Um, even though the nose is down there, I really don't think he had too much of anything. What's happening is this is sensory overload. There's so many people and things that were going on around here, and he's never worked in an urban environment. He's actually having a little bit of trouble. Um, isolating that that odor so it's important that I don't go anywhere until I know he gets locked on something now watch this behavior right here you're gonna see some quick snaps he's picking up the odor but the problem is, is he's moving so fast he can't concentrate on it so he just whips right back to the sweat scent pool of the scent article in the post because that's the best scent he has he doesn't want to follow this weak scent so it's important that we don't go anywhere until he starts showing body language that he has something. And this is where he starts to pick it up. We just have to get kind of out of the area of influence of that start where the scent article was. It made a pretty big scent pool. This is some pretty decent surface transition work. He's following the blown odor as it spreads out uh, past the concrete and actually comes back to it right over here. I drop the leash and just let it go loose because I don't want to impede his progress any more than I absolutely have to. Even though his movement's kind of chaotic, um, I try to I have to keep a loose lead. This is pretty good right here too. Notice all the odor that he's detecting, but at the same time, he keeps visualizing something out ahead of him. And what it is, is this statue. He really wants to see what it is, but at the same time, he wants to stay on odor. So he goes back to the trail and actually takes it pretty nicely. Okay, he's on scent pretty good here, but one of the things I don't like is this. See that quick head pop and now the head plant. This is uh, some rabbit poop and I had to correct him on it really quick. Uh, he immediately came off and what you're going to see is go him go back to work here pretty nicely. He's going to pick up the scent over by this green box. Backward glance at his rabbit poop, but he picks up the scent again right on the other side of this green box over the gravel and then onto the concrete. The problem is, is it's weak scent on the concrete and he doesn't really want to follow that. So his head starts going up and he starts moving faster. What he's trying to do is by speed get to scent. The only problem is that's not going to happen. So I have to kind of stay stationary and wait for him to pick up something that tells me he has odor. I need to, to see some consistent body language that tells me he has something before I follow him. Now he picks it up right there again, but distraction takes him off. He's so busy looking, hearing, and smelling other things that that individual trail is a little bit tough to follow. So I got to be really patient with him. This is the first time we've ever worked in this type of environment with a harness and, and a leash on. Now he picks up the track pretty nicely. Our forward momentum starts moving pretty good and we're going to be going to our first road crossing, uh, or our second road crossing here in just a moment. You see he came out of odor and then went right back to the track and here he picks it up exactly. This is really really nice work right here moving into a good surface transition. I'm trying to keep a nice neutral lead, very, very soft and light on it. I don't want any tension on him at this moment because I could bring him off a sensitive part of the trail. He's starting to see some wind flapping uh, that banner up there and that's what got his attention. Can't really blame him. He's heading back over here to the grass trying to pick up that trail one more time and in so doing gets his lead stuck a little bit. Now this is always a difficult situation uh, but it's really hard working a dog that's moving in and out of scent this way. 
Uh, the best thing you can do is just be nice and patient and do the best you can. Try not to get frustrated with the leash or the dog. Now you're going to see he picks up the trail again right here. He starts following on the lawn really nicely, but unfortunately with the lead underneath that right leg, it's impeding his movement a little bit and it's a distraction, which is causing him to actually come off the track a little bit. This is bad handling and really I needed to do a better job of managing that leash. Okay, so he's isolated the track here, but he's also starting to respond to air scent. And you're going to see a big head movement coming up right there. The wind is actually going from our left to our right, so I don't know exactly how he got that air scent other than a quick swirl. But it's wreaking havoc with the actual track. We have a track right here, but we also have relatively fresh blown odor that's landing in certain places, which is what's causing him to zigzag in here rather than following a straightforward track. Okay, behavior's starting to change now. You're going to see that tail drop hard and his pace start to slow down again. And he's also really detailing the dirt here. This is I've got to pee body language. Not necessarily marking. This is he's just really got to go to the bathroom. So you're going to start seeing that behavior increase and intensify here in just a second. You gotta let him do his business here. I mean, this is just a puppy working in a very difficult environment. Uh, he didn't want to go in the beginning because he was very excited about getting to go out and do work. Uh, but now that things are getting a little slow and a little frustrating, peeing is the first thing that he thinks of. I need to be patient with him and just hope he gets back to work nicely. Again, we're dealing with a lot of uh, blown back wind odor that's fallen back on the track. And so his interest is uh, really in that fresher odor. But here he does a nice job of isolating the exact track and then gives a great proximity alert to Sims here in just a second. Round two, um, we're going to try it again just about 20 minutes after that first trail and see how he does again in a slightly different area of this semi-urban environment. Um, already his interest is much higher and he doesn't seem to be quite as distracted. It's also seeming a little bit easier for him to isolate the scent uh, without coming up off it as much as he was doing before. However, we still do have a couple distractions and you're going to see that here in a second. Unbeknownst to me when we started, uh, this is a heavy dog walking area and we had a lot of marking. Now look at this behavior right here. He nails this road crossing, but he just can't finish it because of his speed, so he has to circle back. Now again, bad lead handling with that leash coming up underneath the leg really kind of makes it difficult for him to concentrate. Um, the only thing I was trying to do is try to keep it nice as loose as I possibly could. Uh, but still, sometimes you'll get it up underneath the leg. It's hard to work with a dog that's this uh, chaotic in their movement sometimes. Now, this is a distraction. Watch how that tail drops. See how he's kind of creeping in the back end a little bit? Plants his nose right here in the bushes, and then he licks. This is dog pee. So I have to correct him off of it. He does it twice, and so he gets a quick little lead snap. But he does a good job of isolating the trail, comes right back to work. And for a little six-month-old puppy, I'm actually quite happy with this. He actually has a little bit of odor here, although the track is behind him, but here it runs out and he actually he starts to come back. You'll see when he hits the exact track. It's pretty nice. 
good head pop, here we go, good consistent direction of, bot, of uh, travel, and good consistent body language that says he's in odor. Now the wind is coming into our face, blowing um, really at about five miles per hour. So his movement's gonna be a little bit to the left and the right because of that blown scent. Now right about here, Kane is going to start reacting to the apex of the turn. Uh, in other words, the trail is to our right, but there's a turn to our left, and so he heads right through the middle of the bushes, and of course I have to follow. When he gets to the other side of this palmetto tree, he cuts back hard right, and he hits or nails the exact track perfectly. Uh, this is where our trail air walked. Uh, but because the turn was to the inside, we had a fair amount of scent that was on the inside of that turn, and that's why he cut it to begin with. But when he ran into the concrete, he didn't have an immediate way to get across. Now we had a nice proximity alert and a really nice ending. This is a fantastic little pup, six months old. I'm very happy with this first couple urban trails that he's done.